Well, g'day, Dragons fans, and welcome to the Mad Dragons podcast brought to you by Complete Warehouse Solutions, a family-owned and operated business with more than 100 years combined experience. Jeff and his team are more than pleased to assist in your Sydney warehouse refurbishment or fit-out fit out project. Based on Commerce Drive in Lake Illawarra, get in touch with the team on 42571930. Just sit back back and hear a tale of a podcast crew. We gather around and like to drink to give a point of view. As that is a battle fire, he shows that he has fallen. And Donny, our host, will jump the ball. God must be restored. God must be restored. He teams our rock, he keeps his crew, he often gets his say. And just alive, he knows the girls who live in Dragon's Way. They're in Dragon's Way. The Mad Dragon podcast is a journey unforeseen. With that man and Donnie to do. And they speak TV and Coco. Just the star, Mazza and the other crew. Here are the Mad Dragon Buckas! People saying, uh, yeah, this is a pretty shit game of footy, and the Tigers were awful, and that we shouldn't be celebrating. At the end of the day, I don't think we're a top eight team. We might give a few top eight teams a shake along the way, but I don't see it as accepting mediocrity to, to know where your club is at and allowing yourself to enjoy every win that comes along. Now, next year and, and, and the year after that, when our expectations are a bit higher, we, we might be able to sit here and be critical of the, the little things that we did wrong when we win. In 2024, when we win, we should just be happy we are able to win, uh, no matter how we did it. And we went to an opposition team's sold-out home ground uh, who was above us on the ladder, and we beat them relatively comfortably if you're not happy and not willing to celebrate that uh, then i don't know how to help you uh, it's a good win let's smile and uh let's see if the grumpy dwarf has man is gonna smile <laughs> down look at my yourself you are to the tin pan lock strapped on your front door well there ain't nothing but heroes and villains more villains than heroes but can you tell Angry Dwarf, yeah, I might have to, uh, might have to make a couple of last-minute changes uh, based on that comment, Donny. Anyhow, so there are three certainties in life, ladies and gentlemen. Death, taxes, and Tigers losing at Campbelltown, with the Dragons adding to that misery with a 12-point win at a packed-out Campbelltown Stadium, although it wasn't the prettiest of games, but a win's a win, so, you know, I'll, co I'll cop that any day. Now, there's been a lot of bullshit around Zach Lomax recently, but he continues to deliver on the field, scoring tries, making metres at will, tacking like a machine, and potting the old conversion for good measure. Maybe it's an audition for his new club, but as long as it benefits us, I don't really give a shit. I'd be more than happy to keep him if someone can get in his ear and convince him to stay the way Flano seems to have done with Hunt. Keep up the good work, son. Special mention to Tyrell Sloan, who was asked a lot of questions by the Tigers today and had an answer for each and every one of them. Now, 
In recent times, we've seen players go to the bin for any contact around the head. Now, sadly, that was missing today with the Tigers' main thug bastard, David Kramer, put on report twice for absolute dog shots. The first one on Flanagan, the other on Lomax, that resulted in penalties only. Now, Clemmer's always been a piece of shit and was very, very lucky not to be sat down. Grant Atkins could easily have acted but chose to be a pussy and just give penalties. Now, if either of these acts had been committed by a dragon, there is absolutely no doubt in my mind that we would have been down to 12 on both occasions. Now, referees have been dropped recently and based off today's performance, Atkins should be dropped under sevens next week as a touch judge. Back to you, Donnie, in the central missionary position. <laughs> Fantastic, mate. Uh, I, I know the men I dragon will be a little bit, little bit upset that you've gone after the referee. He uh, was adamant that the referee was fine. Uh, I, I think Rory McDonald is of the same opinion. He says the referee was fine. Uh, but Nate Battersall's on your side. Uh, he says, get stuck into the referee and that grub Tigers <laughs> front rower has, man. And you've done exactly that. So you haven't let Nate down at all. So uh, <laughs> so good stuff from you there, mate. Uh, and I've got Lisa's well, approval as well, so that's always good. <laughs> it's very painful to exactly. So. All right. Well, something I've been doing the last couple of weeks is, uh, is doing my sort of beer of the week. And uh, I've got another one today. Uh, so over here in Western Australia, we've uh, had the honour of having Fox Friday as uh, has just opened a new brewery uh, here in WA. So I went out, went and visited the brewery on Friday when it when it did open, and I got myself uh, one of these, a T1000 Doppelbock. It is uh, an 8% beer. Uh, it is 2.8 standard drinks, a double IPA, uh, as if I'm not already drunk enough, we're going to need your help today. Uh, we don't have much of an agenda planned. Uh, I'm feeling a little bit under the weather, uh, thanks to a fair few of these. So uh, we might need some viewer questions to keep the uh, conversation flowing today. But I'm sure this is going to be an absolute ripper. If you don't know Fox Friday, they're a Tasmanian brewery, uh, but they've just opened up over here in Western Australia. Go and, uh, go and seek them out. They uh, make some absolutely delicious brews. Oh, including that one. Uh, if you can find the, the Doppelbock, that's an absolute ripper. Let's introduce the panel. Uh, we've got Big T. We've got Jag up there in the top right hand corner. And we've also got the Men Eye Dragon, Rob. Uh, we'll get stuck straight into it. The Mad Dragon Podcast Player of, of the Year. As I said, I, I don't really have uh, much of an agenda other than. Who, who got the three, two, ones? And uh, the man in the match this week went to Jaden Sewer. Now, Big T, you gave Jaden Sewer the uh, the max votes. Uh, talk us through what you liked about Jaden's game. Oh, he was he ran everywhere. He was bumping people off. He was passing the ball. Scored a great try. He's a great try down the left there. Um, that was a great try. It was 168 metres, 58 post contact, four tackle breaks. Um so he busted a tackle for 18 runs. He, he just done everything. Um, and he made 17 tackles, but didn't have to make them. So, um, yeah, Jaden Sewell was my man. Absolutely. Well, I, yeah, I thought I thought Sewell, I had Sewell up there as well, uh, certainly in amongst my votes. I thought he was fantastic uh, on, on the edge, uh, put in a, a real real solid solid performance in what was a, a, an all-round solid uh game, I think, uh, from the team. The bloke that uh, didn't get man of the match, it's kind of rare that he doesn't get man of the match for the Mad Dragons vodcast panel uh, these days. Uh, maybe it's because he's leaving. Uh, Rob, <laughs> you gave Lomax your man of the match, though. You still thought he was our best. Uh, talk us through why uh, you gave him the three. Oh, mate, just, just his all-round game, his effort. Um, was absolutely triple A for effort, mate. Um, with everything that he did, whether it's it's running, defence, um, and obviously going for the high ball. I, I don't think I've seen a player um, as good as him who runs onto a high ball and is able to snatch it 
um, not only just just jumping up for it and catching it cup like, but uh, you know catching it above his head as well too, like AFL like, um, and coming down with it, and also be able to offload. And I, I think he could have even scored himself, and he gave the ball to um, to uh, Flano Junior. But um, mate, um, I mean, I, obviously Sua played very well as well, but I just thought Lomax again was probably the difference. I always thought we were going to win, but probably was the difference to us definitely winning the game. But it's just absolutely exceptional. And what a crying shame we're losing him. He's not going to be playing for us. So it's it's terribly sad because um, I think he's playing the best footy, 24, best footy of his life at the moment. Yeah, I, I, I don't know whether everybody had the same issue as me. I was only catching every second or third word of that, Rob. But uh, oh, sorry, man. Yeah, I, I think uh, your point kind of kind of got across. But um, that yeah, it was it was a fantastic performance from Zach Lomax. I'm, again, I think a lot of people get frustrated, and I, and I saw a lot of comments during the game getting very frustrated with Ben Hunt's kicking game. He goes down a short side and he bombs for Zach Lomax. It's very predictable. It's very boring. But the reason he does it is because it works so bloody often. The amount of times Zach Lomax got up, got there today, was able to compete for the ball, not only compete for the ball, but win it. And then from the moment he gets that ball, he can, like, there's an opportunity. There's an opportunity to score points every single time. So you might be frustrated with the fact that there's no imagination in our kicking game, but while it's working, while Zach Lomax is this bloody awesome, I, I, I don't I don't understand why you'd be frustrated with it. I think it's uh, it, it's great to see. I, I don't know, Jesse. I mean, there, there was other stuff that Zach Lomax did other than just taking the high ball. I mean, you were you were pretty impressed with his game today as well. Yeah, he just continues to produce. Um, and 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 Ben Hunt said following the game to him, Channel Nine that um that he 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 kicks knowing that Lomax will be in his position to to claim that ball, and he was in in the positions today. And yeah, he come up trumps and he laid on a try with it as well. Um, yeah, I thought um, the try that he scored in the first two minutes um, that really got us off to a great start. I think um, getting off to a good start today would have been was ideal to get us on the front foot away from home um, after the start last week. And yeah, um, it, it, score in the first two minutes off a, a lovely offload from um, Jack Bird and then Zach Lomax. Really, no room in the corner. He got it down. And, yeah, he had a terrific game again and just the things he can do. Um, and he had it on show today, like he's showing no signs that he's unhappy at the club. And he, yeah, he's been our most consistent player all year so far. And as, as you said in the chat, if if this form keeps up, there's, there's a blue jersey waiting for him in, in, in a few weeks. Yeah, I think that's that's a pretty pretty good point there, and pretty good one to to move on with their big T. I mean, Zach Lomax playing playing that well that uh, you've got to think New South Wales selectors would be stupid not to pick him, wouldn't they? Oh yeah, but there's there's a lot a lot of other um, wingers out there that have played State of Origin already. Will they go? Will they go with um... any of them going as well as Zach Lomax is right now? Though, I mean, uh, no, I've got the I've red and white goggles, but. I couldn't say that, but Jack Lomax is playing well. Um, like I said weeks and weeks ago, he could play centre, he could play fullback, he could play wing, and he'd be our best player. Um, yeah, no, I, yeah, he's got to be picked on the wing. I think he um, he deserves it. Um, although he's going to Parramatta, but yeah, he deserves to be there. I just hope yeah. he backflips. Yeah, John Muller just yeah. pointing out. <laughs> well, he doesn't need to backflip. He's he's uncontracted now. We have we would have to offer him offer him another contract. Yes, I mean, how how much would we need to offer Zach Lomax to get him to stay? Because he's not staying for eight hundred thousand. Would we need to offer him a million dollars a year to get him to stay? Well, you're not as you said, you're not going to give a million dollars to a winger, but he might end up playing wing at Parramatta. It looks like that's that's what I've heard in the whispers, whether or not he. I don't know if he realizes how much money he's coughing up to to, to um. If he's the best player, like you, you're gonna you're gonna give a million dollars to your best player. Is is he a million dollar player though? Well, he could be. 
Oh, Donnie's frozen. <laughs> well, he's already pissed. Oh, is he? No, it could be. No, no, I'm 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 you good, Donnie? You good? I'm, I'm, I'm all right, mate. I just, uh, just, yeah, it keeps up breaking up on my end, that's for sure. But uh, yeah, no, I, I, I think who gives a fuck if he's a winger? Honestly, like all this talk, oh, you, you, you're not going to give a winger a million dollars a year. You give your best player a million dollars a year, whoever it is, what, whatever position he plays. And Zach Lomax right now is head and shoulders our best player in the, in the team. So why wouldn't you give him a million dollars a year? Like if if he is our most influential player, he's a guy that's having the most influence on our results, why not? Like, who cares what position he plays? Is this an old school way of thinking that wingers are blokes that hang out with footballers? Are we still in that way of thinking? Well, the well, wingers are, are used a lot more than now than what they were back in the day. They, they, they use oh, a lot yeah. more. That They get their hands more on the ball and they, they chase kicks, as you saw today, and they, they, they like the more, another forward, um, cutting the ball up. And, yeah, the wingers yeah, the back then aren't the winger, like the wingers of today. I agree with Donnie. There's one significant thing that we're missing that that Flano um, is prepared to do. Obviously, in a game, if he feels uh, with Sloan, if he's under too much pressure, or or um, yeah, he's not not playing up to where Flano wants him to right at that time in the game, he's prepared to put Lomax straight back to fullback. So that tells me that, like what Donnie's saying. He's pretty much our best player. I mean, to be able to change him, putting him back to fullback, and, and have every confidence that he'll cover that position for us. I mean, that game against Newcastle, that was like everybody said, torrential rain. How safe was Lomax when we put him back there? Um, you know, so uh, it's just it's it's so sad because I mean, this guy is obviously getting to his best football uh, probably at that age, twenty four. He's going to play for the next X amount of years. Why lose him? His best football's in front of him. Yeah, why well, a, a, a guy can play um, fullback, centre, um, winger. He probably could play five eight at a stretch as well. So I mean, he's a pretty important player. Why lose him? He can cover all those positions and cover them so well. I mean, I was I was always going on about Manu, how good Manu is, and yeah, what what a great player he'd be to have. But isn't it similar? Isn't Lamax similar in a way? He can play. Fullback, centre, probably 5'8", play winger, a bit like Joey Manu. So why lose Why lose your best player now that <laughs> would be your best player in the, for the next couple of years? Nate Batterfield no, makes the point that ship has sailed. Uh, he's, he's not staying, and I, and I think he's right. Uh, at the end of the day, he's gone. He's gone. He will not be staying. Um, yeah, that's, that, that, as much as we might enjoy watching him play and, and sit there and scratch our heads and wonder why uh, we would we would let him go. Uh, at the end of the day, he's gone. Uh, Mark Andrews points out that Ben Hunt is our best player. Daylight second, a uh, taking from the team. We would not like look like winning a game. I uh, take Zach out and we're still a good chance. I disagree. I think you get rid of Ben. I, I don't think the Dragons are going to be successful until we get rid of Ben Hunt. Uh, that's, that's my opinion. I think Ben Hunt is... Uh, he is an anchor to our club. We can never be better than we are right now until we get rid of Ben Hunt. That, that's my opinion. I know Mark has a very different opinion. He's got a very high opinion of Ben Hunt. Uh, and there, there are plenty of other Dragons fans out there that do. Uh, I, I'll, I'll go to you, Hasman, because I don't know what you're going to say. I mean, what, what would you just say to, to Mark's comment? I know what a few others would say. but Yeah, well... Uh... I mean, what's what's the succession plan with uh, with Hunt? Like the, the fact of the matter is, we have no one else in the uh, in the club uh, at this point that you know even comes close to Hunt's ability. So, you know, what what are we doing in in that regard? If Hunt wants to piss off back to Queensland, which I'm pretty sure he does, I mean, what's what's the next what's the next step? Who's who we who are we going to get? Are we going to bring up uh, someone from you know, the juniors, or are we going to go looking for another, you know, million dollar halfback? Well, Mark Andrews has come back. We, we, he's still a gun half. He's still one of the best halfbacks in the comp. And it's not like you can replace him overnight. It's going to take time. But as you said, who, who's out there? Like Flanagan said today, or recently, that um, he's looking to fill the last spot in the um, roster with, with the release of um, Paul 
Turner with 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 a half or five eighth, but who's out there that can come yeah. down? But I mean, but, but I mean, the, the guy that's going to replace Paul Turner is going to be of the same price as Paul Turner. He's not going to be fucking Ben Hunt. He's not going to be an eight hundred thousand dollar player that's going to replace Paul Turner. He's got, I don't know, one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to spend on a player. I mean, that's forget about this year. Forget about whoever Shane Flanagan is going to use Paul Turner's money on. That's not going to be the player that's going to replace Ben Hunt. But it was just, I, 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 I agree with a lot of what a lot of what Mark's saying in terms of we need a gun halfback to be able to compete. But Ben Hunt's he, he's thirty four. We're gonna are we, are we just gonna sit there and wait until he's in a freaking wheelchair before we start looking for another option? We will not win a comp. We will not make the top eight with Ben Hunt. We'll never make the top eight with Ben Hunt until he is gone from our club. We won't be successful. That's that. That's my opinion. But what about Manly with DCE? Gary Evans and Ben Hunt are different players, mate. I, like, yeah, I, I, I think I think Ben Ben like Mitch, Mitch Bucket saying Jerry Evans is thirty six and killing it. Uh, are they the same person? Like Ben Ben Hunt, he, he gets gets to the fifth tackle and bombs. Gets to the fifth tackle and bombs. Gets to the fifth tackle and bombs. Uh, like he was. Cherry he was Evans very average life. today. He was very, very average today. Ben Hunt was terrible today, and we still won pretty comfortably. And I think that's a testament to the rest of the team that we are starting to to rely less and less on Ben Hunt. I think that's actually a good thing. Uh, he lays on that like a bird, though. Well, did, did he? Did he? Because I'm pretty sure that was all Zach Lomax. But anyway, <laughs> he, he, he put put up a bomb. Zach Lomax took a great bomb and and gave the pass inside to Jack Bird. Like it, that, that hey, hey, again, again. I I, I think um, we, we could have got a, a 14 year old to put that bomb up. Zach Lomax would have taken it and given the the offload inside to Jack Bird. I don't know whether you give it too much credit to, to, to Ben Hunt for that. I know you're going to go to Chloe, Donnie, but I 100% agree with you. I, I think that a lot of supporters don't follow or, or follow really what the truth of the matter is happening. In age is age. Father time happens to the best of the players, no matter what, um, especially halves. Um, and for me, you only got to go back not that long ago with Widdop, and then we 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 basically panicked. and We, we went after Corey Norman, who wasn't wanted at Parramatta. They played, played massive money for Corey Norman. And look what happened. Instead of, like what Donnie's saying, start playing the seed now. Start looking to 25, you know, so, you know, uh, and beyond to get someone in. I mean, that's what I would have loved about Tommy Dean, yeah, but I know he's, he's not going to come when he signed with, with uh, North Queensland. But that would have been the sort of player built to play with Hunt and, and then see Hunt out, if you see where I'm coming from. Are there up, are, yeah. are there, are there up and coming young halves at other clubs that we could look at? Like I've heard a big rest about this Ethan Sanders. No, the Raiders are interested in him. Yeah, I, I, I think that's what that's the route that we need to take. At the end of the day, you, you sort of look at the the halves in the competition at the moment, and there's you, you, you've got guys like Daly Cherry Evans, Sean Johnson, Chad Towns, and Ben Hunt, who are all thirty. You know, thirty mid thirties plus, and then there's a big gap down to guys like like Lachlan Galvin, like Ethan Strange, who was bloody fantastic today, uh, like Ethan Sanders, like like Kobe Black. Uh, there, there, there's a bunch of really really good young halves that are sort of sort of next in line, and. We don't really have – there's not a lot, in, lot of in-between. There's not a lot of those sort of 20, 25, 26-year-old halfbacks that are available. So – and, and, and I, I guess that's the question for Travis <laughs> fans looking forward is, is what do we do? What, what do, do we just keep plodding along with Ben Hunt until he's 45? Or do we start looking at bringing in one of these gun young halfbacks from outside the club? Because I've got, you know, having a look at Kay Reed uh, yesterday in the SG Ball semi-final, I, I, 
I don't know that he's get, he's the man that's the answer. I don't know that Mike and King Togear is the guy that's going to be the answer. I don't think Afton Ward or Nick Quinn is playing in Jersey Flag is the answer. I don't know that we have a solution in our own juniors. So we have to look outside. We have to get somebody from outside to come into the club to be that succession plan. Because at the moment, it's Ben Hunt and Kyle Flanagan and Daylight. There is nobody else. There is nobody else in our club that looks Donnie, like they're going to have a laugh. How did the Tigers line up Galvin? How did that all fall in the place? He was one of, one of their junior uh, you know, it, teams. But he's been there since he was 16, mate. So he was... They he was line in, him up. He's been there and they've developed him. Ian Mark. Just yeah, like much, us with Bud. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty much the same as us with Jaden Sullivan. And, you know, we, we've decided that Sullivan's not in. And, and to be honest, if you have a look at the game today... I, I mean, are you going to are you, you going to argue with that decision? I think Kyle Flanagan was better than Jaden Sullivan today. Yeah, I, I do want to bring Coco in because she, she's she's been sitting there a while and hasn't said anything. Uh, Hello, we, we, everyone. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. I was just listening and watching. I don't really have a question. I just wanted to get your take on the game. Oh, I thought the game was good. Okay, well, my this my can take. I thought it was a very good game. I thought the defence was good. There were moments that, you know, I thought we could have improved on. But, you know, I think I do agree with the whole Ben Hunt thing. We do need someone that can, after Ben Hunt, like, we need, like, the young, like, Jesse, you know what, Wollongong is the Illawarra Cup and stuff. We've got, well, maybe they should have a look at um, those teams like Carmel Krugers, um, the Dapto Canaries, the Royal Butchers. Yeah. There's always some good they don't, young. They don't even look to the um, Illawarra League anymore. It's, that, you know what? They should because there's some really good players out there. And I just think, yeah, we need to think about after Ben Hunt because there should be a strategy with that because we need some young blood in. We don't need our over 30s, you know. <laughs> So, um, yeah, but the game was – we got a win. That was a plus, I think. Um, yeah, it was, there were some good moments, and I think – I know I'm going to get in trouble with this, but Zach needs to stay on the wing. He kept moving in. I could see him moving in, in. You know, buddy, go back to your spot. That's it. I like, That's I like Lisa's comment there. Which one? Go, go to the country. And, yeah, and have a look. The, go to the yeah. bush. Yeah. Bush. Yeah, Bushwood is good. They and you know what? They've got aggression, and they've it's hard yard out there. There's a lot of good yeah. talent out there. I mean, why not tap into it? I mean, there's a lot of untapped talent out there that, you, you, who knows, they might be ready for the NRL if you get them in the system and get them playing closer to the city. Um, yeah. I, 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 again, like, the grass I, I, too much. Do, do we? Do you need to do that? There, 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 there is. SG Ball's the best. The, the, the best under 19 competition in the entire world is the SG Ball. Just look through that competition, find your best halves. Look through the, the, the Mal Meninga Cup, the best under 18 competition in the world, find your best halves. Look through the, the, the Harold Matthews Cup, look, you know, the best under 17 competition in the world, find the best halves. The under, best under 16 competition up in Queensland, the Cyril Connell Cup, find your best halves in that. Like, all of the best halves in the freaking world are in those competitions. You, you yeah. don't need, you, you, you don't need to go. Like you, you've done, you've already done that. You've scoured that's them it. from the country and you brought them down to play in those competitions. You're not getting a 32 year old that's playing great footy for the Thurl Butchers or the Munchie Dragons. You, you, you're going to get a guy that's that's young and playing good footy in the best competitions on the planet. Um, a few people pointing out that uh, that Lachlan Galvin was a para junior. That's technically correct, but he was actually born in Campbelltown. Uh, he was just a mad Parramatta Eels fan, so he wanted to go and play for Parramatta. So he played the first year a year young for the, the, the Eels Harold Max team. Uh, after a year of not doing so well for, that, for them, then he came and he played second year of Harold Max at the Tigers, uh, and he's been there ever since, since he was, you know, 16 or something, but he's born in Campbelltown. He's born and bred in that area. Um, so despite the fact he did actually start his junior career with the Eels, uh, I would still argue he's, he's um, a guy from the area that the, the West Tigers cover. Right. Uh, did we actually get to the third person in the... Uh... <laughs> 
in the <laughs> Mad Dragon <laughs> Podcast Player of the Year. We've, we've, uh, we've done we exactly what did. we said we would do. Actually, I, I, I might go back. I might might go back to you, Big T, uh, because uh, Raf Raf Fishner has actually put this question in the chat a quite a while ago now. But uh, I'll chuck that in. Check that in now. Uh, talking about Jaden Sewer, who we was the man of the match today, according to the panel, uh, saying that we we hope hope we re-sign him soon. Uh, he is another one of the players. We've got about 20-odd players that are off contract this year, yeah. Jaden Sewer being one of them. Um, th there's been varying you know, rumours in terms of the talks that we're having with him. I mean, is this a, a priority signing in your eyes? Well, I think it's a priority signing if um, if Wayne Bennett's looking at him. Um, I know Wayne Bennett might not be the Dolphins next year, but, um, yeah, he might be able to to um, snafu him up there and um, yeah but we you do need to sign him he's a good second rower he, uh, he runs hard plays hard and always gives 100% he's, yeah, he's but, keen to stay oh, he's keen he to stay that's to right stay. exactly right he wants to stay according to who him him he, he said it to the Illawarra Mercury a couple of weeks ago okay because last year he said he wanted out. He wanted a, he wanted a release and he wanted to leave the club. Uh, he and said he said it the year before weeks. that as well. He uh, said, he said, to the he said there's no links to him going back with Wayne Bennett. That's all rubbish. Yeah, but he, he also said that um, he wants to stay at the Dragons um, because you can see they've actually turned a corner. He th yeah. thinks they're getting better. So he wants to stay there and build that. So um, that's what he said to the Mercury, I think. Didn't Flano say so, that? So, so, so why hasn't he signed? Because the Dragons have offered him a contract. Not sure. They offered him a contract. He before the season started. Hurry, apparently. And, 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 and then, hurry, uh, but the Dragons already offered him a contract, and then as soon as they offered Luciano Leilua a contract, they withdrew Jaden Sewers. So are they now going to offer Sewer less money because now they've got Luci Luciano Leilua? I don't know. It, would, it could change with, with the Lomax situation now because that frees up $3 million losing Lomax, they said. And who knows, that might come into play there. Depends who they look at to replace Lomax as well. I don't know if part of that will go to Jaden Sewer. Well, I, I don't think it would be a bad option. I, I, I think that uh, you know, getting Jaden Jaden Sewer to stick around at the club would be be a, a huge a huge bonus. Uh, I think Luciano Lelua has been, been fantastic since he's got back to the club. Uh, he's shown that he can can really offer something. And I I, I reckon Jaden Sewer is an incredibly underrated uh, second rower in the in the competition, not just within our club. Um, I would love to see him stick around. So I, I hope that he does. Uh, I just got a little bit cynical uh, around um, Jaden Sewer re-signing when we saw we, we were in negotiations with Jaden Sewell, which we, there was stuff that was was happening on a regular basis, updates on that, and then as soon as, as soon as we signed Leilua, all of a sudden we we're like, oh, we're going to put that off until later in the year now, and that that just that just seemed that felt a bit odd to me. Uh, I I hope we keep him. Uh, I think he's really really important to what we we are trying to build, and um, yeah, let's uh, let's see see how it plays oh, out. But Donny, yeah, here's what he yeah. said. Well, I'll bring up what he said. He said, I'd love to stay at the club because I love the club. It's been a tough two and a bit years, but I can see light at the end of the tunnel. It's a week-by-week -week thing. It, I've played shit against the Dolphins. It was bad timing. I just want to be winning games and turning up. The club lo won't lose the player they want to keep, and if I'm that player, I'll stick around. Okay. Can, 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 you, can, me, can you find me some quotes from Zach Lomax about three months ago uh, where he might have said something... Almost identical. Uh, uh, it, 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 it's, it's great that he's saying that, but until he signs, I'm still nervous. All right. Uh, the the one the one point, and and I'll I'll bring up uh, one of the comments that I starred uh, earlier from Tolly Angelidis. Uh, one vote actually went to Jacob Little, uh, making playing his 100th game against his former club. Uh, I, I thought I thought he had a fantastic game. I actually gave a little the three. Uh, I, I just thought he controlled things really well from nine. Uh, his service from dummy half was, was outstanding. He played the entire eighty minutes. 
Uh, he ran when the opportunity was there, although there weren't a great deal of opportunities, but he went, when he did run, he, he, he picked up metres, 36 tackles through the game. I, th I, I thought he was fantastic for us today. Uh, so I, I actually gave him uh, the, my man of the match. Maybe that was a little bit nostalgic because it was his 100th game. Uh, but uh, I thought he had a, I thought he had a really, really good game. So he got the, uh, the one vote from, the, from the panel today. Uh, anybody else want to talk on Jake Little's 100th game? Uh, Coco, yeah. I'll go to you. Um, I'll just be honest. I didn't know it was his 100th, 100th game, but. Um, but I just want to say congratulations on making it to 100 um, games and you played very well against um, Coruscant. You did very well, Jacob, so keep up the great work. Tigers were, Tigers were very slow around the ruck, I think, um, and that gave him the opportunity to run. He had um, seven runs for 78 metres or something, so um, I was proud with the effort tonight. 36 tackles was a good too, so... Yeah, in the middle, done a lot of work. It, it looked like to me, he's um, I know it's his hundredth, but he, he looked like he's ready now to step up for a little bit more responsibility. Um, I saw at the end of the game, Hunt was shaking his head. I don't think Hunt was happy with his game personally himself, Hunt's game himself, but I just oh, Hunt, was, Hunt was filled, Hunt, Hunt was filthy with his own game because, yeah, like he, he didn't play well. Yeah, so game little, little, little just seemed to really step up, and maybe I don't know. Maybe it's the you know those digits, a hundred. Um, you made it, but he just it really felt like he um, he stepped up and and he's ready just to yeah you know what I mean like go to that level where you, you see some of the hookers. I mean Abby Abby's an example. I mean all the Tigers do that. He didn't really play a good game today, but um, you know you see. So uh, to me, Little might be going up that next level of responsibility, um, you know, which is great as a hooker. Uh, uh, does he kick as well too from dummy half sometimes, uh, Donny? Uh, oh, very, very, very rarely, mate. I, I can't yeah. remember the last time he kicked from dummy half, but uh, I do I do think he's capable of it. But it's not a not a massive string to his bow. I do want to address a comment on the screen from Mark Andrews because I think it's very insightful. Uh, Appy had a had a blow par game today but give credit to our market do you? and mm. and i think uh, again when, when you talk about giving credit to the to the markers who every time he stepped out they, they were on him like they didn't allow him to move but that comes down to coaching i, I think that has managed it's something you know notice in terms of the way the dragons actually worked really hard particularly from first market to shut, shut down epi coratel's uh, ability to create for the times yeah well, the I, I think there was a uh, – I think Flano would have said to him uh, during the week, look, he is very dangerous uh, at dummy half. Let's, you know, shut him down as as much as we can. I think that was a sort of concerted effort to uh, to limit his effect. And I think whatever the plan was, they, they executed it uh, absolutely bloody brilliantly. Um, now, I just want to go back to uh, Jacob Little uh, briefly. Um, <laughs> now – I mean, he's playing playing his hundredth game against his against his old club and uh, making his opposition Hawker look like an absolute fucking moron. Um, but it's, I mean, I, I don't think I've ever seen him uh, seen him kick. But there's there's a lot of comments on uh, social media while I was watching the game. Um, you know, basically wondering why Jesse Marshke had uh, didn't get on. It's like, well, the way that Jacob Little was playing, why the hell would you take him off? So yeah, well, I, 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 might, I might actually go. To, I'm sorry, I'll just just uh, take over for a sec. And I might actually go to Jesse with that one because I know you were you were a little bit frustrated yourself with the fact that Marshy didn't go on. What would you have done with Marshy? Where would you have put him to get him onto the field? Well, I wasn't it wasn't frustration. It was just more of like questioning why he wasn't come on. I don't know. Um, because Flano used him in a variety of roles last week. I thought he would have played him on when um when Bird went off. Um I know it might have been a, a baptism of fire to, to mark up against Justin Olam, but I, I for his speed and, and, and for a bit more um a bit more um of a running game that we needed to beat the Tigers, um I I thought that um Marshy would be okay because the commentators did 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 mention that um 
the Tigers may um, send Olam Eisenhoof's way or, or what, the whole second half with Eisenhoof not known as a, as a sender. So I thought um, Eisenhoof might have struggled there because he's not, not not the quickest guy. And Olam is that sort of player that can just push you out of the way. And um, I thought Marsh, you might have gone there for his, for his speed and ag- agility. Cause he's... I can answer. I can answer the question, Jesse, Donny. Uh, the commentator, I can't remember who it was, quite clearly said, and I agree with him 100. percent How could you take Little off, let him play 80 minutes? He was playing like. Well, that, yeah, but that, 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 that's, I, I guess, not the question anymore. Jesse's saying that Marky should have gone to to center to replace Bird rather than Tom Eisenhoof. I mean, what what are your thoughts on that, Rob? Oh, I don't know. I, I think Marky's more. Halves more, you know, the hooker like what we're talking about. <laughs> well, he, he, went, he, went, he, went to, he went to center last week when Bird got hurt. Yeah, um, but you know I mean, they, they, they could have they could have restructured things around. You know what I mean? Put, uh, put, really. put I, 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 no, no, you couldn't do it. You couldn't you couldn't put Maskey up against Olam. He would no, have been I agree. Olam, Olam didn't Olam. have a good game though. No, no, no. I'm not saying about that. Why didn't he have a good game though? But what, what, because what, was it, was on him. Because Eisenhuth was defending him. That's exactly right. He didn't, he, if he was running over the top of Jesse Markey four times during the game, you would have said Olam had a really good game. When Eisenhuth yeah. would know him, he's his old teammate at Melbourne. So if anyone knows right. him, it'd be Eisenhuth. But, but, but just to answer the question, I mean, it's, it's Little's 100th game, and the commentator was right. It, it, Little was playing as well as what Abby does normally when he's playing his best game. So there's just no way you could take Little off. I mean, they still scored a try, right? And there was still X amount of minutes to go. So there was just, unfortunately, probably just no opportunity for Marshy to get on. And there's no way, the way Little played, you know, you couldn't take him off. He was playing too well. How, yeah. often, how, often, how often have we said that, why is Little not an 80-minute player? He well, he today. was today. <laughs> he so, the Tigers, yeah. Well, are we going to say... He's not an 80-minute player. He can play 70 and mask he can play 10. If he can play well, 80, I like, play for I like 80. Marsky, I, like, I like the kid, but I, I ask you guys this today. I'll throw another spanner in the works now. Sorry, Donnie. But I, I just think Blocker, I think Hasman's right. I think Blocker needs a little bit of time. I don't know whether he's still injured or whatever, but why are we Stop carrying all that? There, there the, we go. There's, there's Rob taking over the agenda. There was an agenda. We do, we, we do have a question from Kieran Gibson about that that I was saving up, and I was going to ask it in about half an hour's time. But uh, oh, sorry, Rob's Rob's brought it forward. Uh, Kieran. Kieran <laughs> no, he, he's basically said, he said, said like, he's saying exactly the same thing. I mean, there, there, there's a hundred Dragons fans all saying the same thing. Uh, has been. I know you're you're pretty passionate about this. The fact that Block has probably got to go. Um, I'm going to try and try and find somebody who doesn't. You know, I, I don't know. Again, I don't know what they're going to say. So I'll go to you, you Coco, on on Blake Laurie. Um, yeah. Again, a lot of people saying that uh, our Player of the Year last year needs to be dropped. He needs to go. Uh, do you, do you think it's time for, for Blocker to uh, make way for somebody else? Mm-hmm. Uh, yes and no. So I think, yes, he was, our, he was our player of the year last year. And this is what shits me about football and fans. They love to dig deep and like, think that everyone's not good enough. Yeah, he might have shit games. But you don't know what's going on. Maybe he's got shit going on in his own life and he's trying his best. Football might be his outlet. And, yes, he might be having a shit time on that field. But, yes, Take maybe have two games in in um, New South Wales Cup, let his confidence come back up again, and let him come back because I think he's a good player and he's one of our good players and we need him on our field. You know, we need a Blake in our like we need that aggression. We need him. So I think two games in in um, in New South Wales Cup, get his confidence confidence back and bring him back because we need him. We can't lose any more players. Uh- Big T, I might bring you into this this, this chat as well because I know you've been a, a, a bit of a blocker fan. Um, I'm trying to avoid the people that haven't been blocker fans, so <laughs> I'll, I'll go go to you for this one. I mean, do, do you think there's there's some case for, for blocker to actually stay in the team uh, going forward, or do you think he needs a rest? 
Oh, there we go. There we go. We've got one. We've got one. He's up next. Mute. <laughs> You're on mute. <laughs> He's still on mute. What are we talking about? Locker. Like 110 Locker meters today. 110 meters, 43, meter, uh, 43 minutes. Um, yeah, I think he did enough to stay. He did make that one mistake on our line, but um, I thought he did well today. Um, I think he. He played well off the bench. Bring him in off the bench. 110 metres today, 43 minutes. That's a that's an effort. So, um, yeah, I'm happy with him to stay. Yeah, look, I'd, I'd just like to, to say, right, on the, the, the one error, the, the, the one error that he did make, it was on our line. Uh, I can't remember who it was, but tack, tackled right on the line and Mika Ravalawa had to dive to get into the field of the play on the second tackle. There was nobody else putting their hand up to no. take that carry. Nobody else in our team was putting up their hand to take that next carry. And Blake Laurie had got back and he said, like, two metres out from our line, give me a run, give me the ball. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I give him credit for that, but I I don't know. I find it, I, I'm finding it increasingly hard to, to justify his, his selection in the team. He just continues to come up with errors. Uh, when he, he, he gets through his work, but he doesn't seem to make a dent. He, he is too one-dimensional. I, I, I just, I'm starting to get to the point where I feel like the game might have passed yeah, guys no, like Locker, Locker by. Yeah, yeah. But you've got guys in other teams like Locker, spilt like Locker, um, and they're absolutely killing it. I thought um, uh, Mo Fonawaka had a good game today, even though they got beat. But um, I thought, yeah, yeah. Um, I think there's still a place for block off the bench, playing 43 minutes a game, making 110 metres, a dozen, two dozen tackles. Um, I think playing still the Warriors, play. We're playing the Warriors. They're big they're boys. Big, they're big, big boys. Big I don't they're think Block is up like he used to. I, I think he's still carrying He's still some sort of fitness or injury or there's yeah. something that's not 100% right to me. He's not running up as hard as what he used to. I'm not saying he's not putting in, but I, I think something's holding him back. I don't know. It just doesn't seem to be the same blogger. And all I'm saying is, is that I love the guy. I think he believes. Also, and but also, is, is, there, is there a better option at the moment? Right at the moment in our team that you know, well, we're going to play some big boppers coming up on Friday night, right? So, also, is, is there a better? Is there a better option than Blake Laurie? I, if, if you're looking for a guy that's I'm, just going to cart it up, well, I mean, go for a young bloke like a Toby Couchman. Um, yeah, he's he's a, he's another work rate front row. A block of the work, he's a guy that lives off his work rate. For me, I, if, you, if you're if you looking for a guy that lives off his work rate, I'd be going for a younger guy like like one of the Couchman brothers, uh, in particular Toby, because he's been playing in the middle. Um, yeah, yeah Mark, Mark Andrews says Fafita. Fafita is not a work rate front rower. He is an impact front rower. He's a guy that comes on and, and will have a have a high impact and, and can really bend the line, uh, but never, not once, not once. He's played about 20 games in reserve grade now. Not once has he run over 100 metres. Uh, I, I am I, really concerned about the feeders' work rate. Can I, say yeah, can I also put in there, Blocker's losing his best mate. Um, his best mate's going to Parramatta. So what's he going to do without Zach Lomax in the team? So it's up to Blocker there. What's, it, what's he going to do? Is he going to play well or is he going to drop back to reserve grade? We, we, we talked a bit. We talked a little bit about that last week, Big T, in, t in terms of you know Zach Lomax is, is leaving, and it seems to be his best mate that is actually more That's impacted right. by it than Lomax. So yeah, well, uh, it's, it's, is, is, is is that a factor, or is it more to do with the fact his ribs hasn't haven't, haven't healed yet? Yeah. It's not not a hundred, I, I, I don't know, but he doesn't seem no. He doesn't seem invested like he did last year. We're, we're just speculating. We're just speculating and um, saying what we think. We don't know what he thinks at all. So um, it could be an emotional guy and um, he's not going to be with his mate anymore. He's feeling a bit down. Yeah. Ramif no, no. Merritt is another one that I didn't think had a, yeah, he's one of his better games today either. So um, it is is he another... He got, he got votes, mate. Yeah. I thought he played well. I thought was right. Well, I, 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 nothing great. 
I didn't look at the stats at all, but I mean, well, ha, has has man, you I know you nine runs, sixty-five great, minutes. Great, great, great. You usually got the stats there. I'll give you a bit of time to look them up. But uh, RFM stats. I mean, what what, what did uh, what did, runs, what's his stat line with that? Yeah, I'm not asking you. Hey, not, <laughs> yeah. well, shut up and I'll tell you. <laughs> they had, so nine runs, 65, 65 metres, nine hit-ups. Um, how many how many tackles did he make? I don't think he made many. Um, oh, sorry. I tell an absolute fucking lie there. 42 tackles, two missed. So he's pretty much yeah, a so tackling machine, not much else. They did, didn't didn't do a lot with the ball in hand, but uh, didn't do much with the ball in hand, but tackled like an absolute bastard. He Top played played the eighty minutes. Um, did he play the full eighty? He would have been close. I mean. do it thinking. Uh, yeah, he did. Yeah, usually the usually the second row rollers do, but uh, yeah, I I, I I I didn't think he was great, but I thought it was his best game since round one. To be honest, uh, I thought. Brandon Fatala Rarit has been very ordinary uh, since round one and keep being surprised that he gets picked. But uh, I think he justified his selection today, coming in for an injured Luciano Leilua. Um, Jesse, I, I, might go, I might go to you on, on Luch. Uh, is he back next week? I mean, do we know the extent of the injury? I haven't uh, I haven't had a chance to read too, too much about uh, the, the calf injury. Are we expecting him to play next week? Um. I, I really wouldn't rush him. It's a five-day turn. I think he only picked it up yesterday. Um, yeah, I wouldn't tough, be rushing right? it. I, I wouldn't tough. be rushing a calf. I know it's a calf. Okay, so, 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 it's some, so it's something he picked up at training. It's not something he picked up in the game last week and they were trying to manage yeah. and he didn't quite make it? Yeah, that, that's what the report said. It's it's something he picked up at um tr training and yeah, I don't know whether um he's worth the risk um, playing against this big Warriors side on, on Friday. Yeah, um, the calves are tricky, so I wouldn't be rushing him back if he's not 100%. Yeah, fair, fair enough. I, I, I totally agree. If he's only picked it up the other day, then, um, yeah, you, you'd think he's going to be long odds on a, on a short turnaround to, to play the Warriors at home. Um, it'd be great to have him back because he's, he's been fantastic since he, he came across. But um, we, we, need his, we need his size. Oh, he's up against Jackson Ford. I'd love to see that battle. Smash him! <laughs> I don't want to see that too. I don't, I, don't want, I don't want to see him go up, see Jackson Ford go up against some plotter like bloody Murdoch Masella. But... Well, I thought yeah. Murdoch Masella went well today. 72 yeah, well, metres. Um, and he played 20 minutes. He did, he did uh, what he had to do. He's back, in, he's back in his proper position. Yeah, he's he's a planning front, a he's a front, how to use him. He's a front rower, he's not an edge player. He's not an edge player, he's a front rower. And I thought he was going to play that when he came a couple of years ago, but Hook put him on the edge. Yeah, well, Hook, Hook, Hook uh, coached him at um, international level and saw him play on the second row and did pretty yeah. well. But, uh, yeah, no, it's um, – I, 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 I tend to agree. I, I think in terms of uh, – and we spoke about it last week, uh, about the, the metres meters per minute stat and, and that Ben Murdoch <laughs> still has more metres per minute than yeah. any other dragons forward. So we played, he when he gets out there, he's actually had seven runs for seventy-two meters. Yeah. That's pretty good, isn't it? Twenty minutes. You, you, Come you on, twenty minutes to get minutes. seventy-two meters. When he'd be can, good can, for twenty minutes stints to add to the impact. That's yeah, well, look, I, last year. He's good. He's good for two ten-minute stints. Well, well, Tower around around sixty-three and eighty minutes. So, yeah. so, so multiply multiply that by four. As man, multiply 72 by four. Uh, that's how many meters he would have ran if he played the full 80 minutes. I mean, that's, that's not that, that, that's obviously ridiculous. He wouldn't have done yeah. that. But that's that, that, that gives you an indication as to his work rate in, in that 20 minutes he was on the field. He was working hard, he went out there, he had as many runs as yeah. he possibly could, made as many meters as he possibly could. Yeah. He, he did his job. Um, exactly right. I, I'm I'm critical of the age demographic of our team. Uh, I had a had a bit of a look today at the uh, like what one of the big criticisms I think uh, last year coming coming in well not last year when when Anthony Griffin came into the team one of the big criticisms was that we were dad's army 
Like he brought in all these old guys to play for our team. And I, I just had a bit of a look today before before the game. So look, looking at the the age demographic of our team under Anthony Griffin during his first five games compared to the age demographic of the team under Flanagan. And older now. On, on average, we're one year older. Yeah. On average, the, the team is one year older than it was under Anthony Griffin. 27.32 is the average age of our squad through the first five games. 26.35 well, was the average age of the squad under yeah, Griffin. You're going to expect it, that. You're going to expect do, that because, yeah, because yeah. Under, 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 under Hook, our backs were all 24 and under. Under Shane Flanagan, our backs are 25, 26 and under. The same players, though. The same players. <laughs> but our forwards, our forwards were older back then. We had Maguire, we had McCulloch, we had um, Paul Vaughan, which was older. We had Aaron Woods, who was older. Our forwards were older. But now our backs. Uh, our backs. Were they? I mean, we've got Ivan, who's over 30. We've got Raymond no, 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 no. Marin, who's over 30. We've got Ben Murdoch, who's over 30. We've got Jack DeBellin, who's the oldest player, player in the really? forward Frankie's pack. Well, this year. Well, Frankie well, there you go. This year. There you go. That's why we're one and a half years older than we were under Hook, because our backs, all our backs are all a year and a half, two years older. Yeah. Yes, Sowie, we are enjoying the win, mate. We are doing the win, Sowie. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, yeah, no, thanks, no. thanks for watching, man. Always, always good to see uh, Jamie Sowie in the comments. But, uh, yeah, we, we, we are certainly enjoy, enjoying the win, just uh, having a bit of a chat about it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's always good to to get together and shoot the shit, as uh, as we say. But, yeah. um, going, going back, let's, let's, let's go back to the before the game started. And I'll go to you, Jesse, with this one. Uh, the jersey, the alternate jersey. I believe it's the first time we've worn it so far this season. Uh, wh what do you think of the alternate jersey? I, I, I'm not a fan of it. Um, I think stick to the to the red V and then the um, pay respect to the other half of the um, the joint venture, which is the Illawarra Steelers, and have the plain um, red um, alternate jersey. I particularly don't like it. I just, yeah, it doesn't really represent us, I think. Yeah. Um, and I really don't like, yeah, I just, I liked last year's one way better than, than this one. Um, yeah, red V all day. And then the um, the red, the Cardinal red of the, um, sorry, the Scarlet red of the Yellow or Steelers. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. hey, Jamie Sauer there, uh, just talking about our, our last point and uh, saying the, uh, Next gen are getting their game right for transition. Plenty of good players, and, and nice. I, I'd agree. I, yeah, I'd certainly I certainly agree. agree with that. Uh, yeah. A, a, again, we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit more when we get to the the, the lower grades uh, wrap. But uh, I, I I wonder why the Couchman boys aren't getting a bit more time. I, I know Shane Flanagan said during the during the preseason that. Uh, you know that they maybe played a few more games than they should have last year, but uh, I just look at the work that they get through and the way that they do things in reserve grade. They're too good for that level. They should be playing in the NRL uh, ahead of you know thirty plus fringe first graders that that are not our future. Uh, they so... are not going to learn playing New South Wales Cup. They will learn playing week in week out NRL football. Well, I don't know that I necessarily agree with that. I think you learn playing New South Wales Cup, but you get to a certain point. Yeah. Where you, yeah, you, 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 do, you do need to run the top grade. And uh, I, I I don't know. I, I think they're both there. I think you could uh, make an argument both of them should uh, be somewhere near near the top grade. But um, it, Mark Andrews says, who would you drop? Uh, I, I think there's a few players that I'd be, be looking at. But uh, Jamie South is... What, what's he what's he put in there? Rush, rush them all in. Uh, yeah, learn hard lessons. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I I, I think uh, they 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 will be good players and they will be good players long term. Uh, I I guess as a drag, <laughs> we're all a little impatient. We want to see them now uh, and and seeing what they're doing in the lower grades and getting an opportunity to see that on the New South Wales Rugby League TV app. Uh, it's, it's, I don't know. I, I, I think they've got a bit more to offer than a, than a couple of the guys that are that are in the top grade at the moment. Um, all right, we well, might go to one of the uh, the starred questions because uh, Mad Lad asked this. 
quite a few walk, quite a while ago. Uh, but uh, after the yeah, Jack Bird got a, got a try today, set up a try, but then he went off with concussion. And, and a few people asking this question uh, has man as to whether whether he's going whether he's going to be allowed to play against the the the, uh, the Warriors or not. Um. Well, so my understanding is that uh, the Rex Flanagan's actually going to uh, appeal the uh, sort of the grading of that uh, HIR because it was, was given as a grade one, which is a that's an automatic stand down. Um, but I, I believe that he is going to appeal that if he's if he's successful. I think he probably plays. Uh, obviously, if he if that doesn't work out, then you know, then no, he's not there. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd like to point out that there is a precedent for that, Hazmat. Uh, so, so Sam Walker for the Roosters, uh, it's two or three weeks ago now, he got he got a Category One head knock. So he he got his head in the wrong position, got knocked out. Uh, was ruled Category One, ruled out for that game. Now, on the same day, he he did a HIA, he he, he did a, a HIA assessment and passed. So even though he passed his HIA because he was Category 1, he was still ruled out for that game but was allowed to play the following week. Uh, so that allowed the Roosters to then challenge it and then they were allowed to... You know, Walker was allowed to play the, play the very next game. Uh, Stephen Bates saying we are allowed to challenge that with the independent doctor. So I, I think there's a, there's a little bit to, to play out uh, in, in that regard in, in terms of... Whether he will be allowed to play or not, I, the, the, well, the, the big question is going to be whether he actually did a HIA today, which I'd assume he would have done. And given the Dragons were so upset about it, I assume he passed that HIA, but wasn't allowed back on today, which is which is fair enough. We've got an independent doctor for a reason, uh, so he's ruled out for this game, but he may still be allowed to play against the Warriors. So we don't know yet. Uh, but there is a chance that he will be able to play. It's, it's interesting, though, uh, isn't it? Isn't no, saying, a, uh, Daniel Riddell said that uh, Flano said in the press conference that he failed the HIA. He did. Bird actually did fail. Okay, so if he failed, then he's gone for 11 days and he misses the next two games, Jess. So that's, yeah, the Warriors and Anzac Day. Because oh, we got two games in the next 11 days. Jack Bird out of both of them. Yeah, so that might open the door for um, Tua Pilotu to make his debut, potentially. Tua Pilotu. Put Zach Lomax back in the centres. Oh, he'll still yeah. hate that. You'd, 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 you, you could <laughs> see that. Zach Lomax will absolutely hate that. Unless he leaves Tom Eisenhoff in the centres. But I, I don't, I don't <laughs> see him as... He is. I, 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 think, I think that was sticky tape for today, mate. I don't think... Again, yeah, no. when, when you've only got 17 players to choose from and none of them are a centre, then you do the best you can. Uh, but when you've got, you know, the full 36 players, including your, you know, development players to choose from, uh, I, I think um, I think you might make a difference... Moment. He, he might might make a different uh, different move other other than uh, other than Tom Eisenhuth. I think it'll be an actually an actual centre that will come into the centres. Well, he doesn't want he to doesn't move Lomax. Move, apparently, he doesn't move Lomax. Who they you know what what are the options? Tamale. What are the realistic or, options? Or or Matt Fine. He might bring Matt Fine in. I see. We could bring Matt. Matt 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 Matt, Matt, Matt Fine hasn't been playing centres in New South Wales Cup. Max has. Um, and Tamale? Well, Tamale, Tamale play, played on the wing this week. He got moved out to the wing with Ben Johnson moving into the centres. Uh, Max Dean, I, so I, I think he's considering Tamale on the wing. Uh, I, I, I think it would be an option. Uh, defensively, Tamale hasn't shown he's up to it. I, I think that they'd be more likely to go to uh, Max Dean, I, or Matt 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 Fien, I could could come in as well, um, you know that that, that is, could yeah. be an option even though he has has been playing fullback. Was that yes? It's a big job. It's a big job. Whoever comes in because he'll be marking RTS. Yeah, no, it's uh, well. I, I guess something to to look forward to. Um, 
yeah, Mark Andrews saying giving a crack is enough speed to, to ma match uh, Roger to of Arthur Sheck. But, um, yeah, again, speed is not his he's not his issue. The issue is that when he's played in the centres, he, he jams in and he tackles the bloody front rower and leaves his wing and, you know, six on one. Um, he makes some terrible dis decisions defensively. He's got a fair bit to learn. Uh, for me, defensively, he's, he's great in attack, and, and and again had nine tackle busts uh, in the New South Wales Cup game on the weekend. Um, yeah, I, I, it's got to be Lomax. Lomax has got to move in, and then maybe Tamale on the wing uh, could be could certainly be an option. Uh, but we've got to we we have to move Lomax into the centres. That is the only legitimate option if we actually want to win this game. Uh, all right, so looking at uh, some of the other things that, that went on during the game, Hasmin, you've sort of already talked a little bit about this, but uh, I might go to you, Big T. David Clemmer, um, two high shots. Oh, fuck me. Go. <laughs> go. <laughs> it's, uh, it's go. go. Mate, that first one was point of contact, shoulder to the head, gone, son. The second one, close fist, cross the, cross the face, gone, son. See you later. Twice he should have been sent off. Well, at least 10 minutes in the sin bin. But, no, David Clemmer, Tigers player, Grant Atkins. Yeah, I don't like the Dragons. You can stay on, Dave. Um, as Hasman said in the in the Heroes and Villains, if it had been a Dragons player, it would have been 10 minutes in the bin for sure. So, wasn't happy with that. So, so, so where, 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 where was the point of contact for the first one? Shoulder straight to the jaw, mate. So, so David Clemmer, who's 140 kilos... Shoulder coming in a yeah, million miles an hour straight into yeah. the jaw of Kyle yeah. Flanagan. Kyle Flanagan yeah. gets up and goes, put him in the big for 10. I'm That's perfectly right. fine. And stuff. <laughs> he didn't fucking get him near the head. It was he did, he nowhere did. near his head. One he red eye, one wide he eye. He got a, a little slap. He got a little slap on the follow through and he said, that was all he got. The first one was fine. The second one he should have gone to the bin. But Dom Young oh. gets Dom Young does a similar tackle last week. He got sent off. So what the hell? Dom Young got him in the head. Didn't get him in, he the, head. in the head. He got Lomax in the head. Oh, he got Lomax in the head. He got Lomax in the head oh, from the quick restart. That that uh, that should have been ten in the bin. I agree that the second one oh. was ten in the bin. The first one, the shoulder hit him right in the chest. Okay, hit him right there. But if okay, you're serious the, about head the contact, follow through slapped him in the head. Well, give me a second because it's, it's literally just come up on the uh, bloody replay that uh, Fox are running. Uh, well, the Fox yeah. commentators, you, the, Fox you, comment the, 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 the Fox commentators saw his head snap. That's he right, yeah. Snap back like that. It wasn't because well, he got I, hit in the head; it's because he got hit by a fucking truck. But then, then I seen the Channel Nine commentators, and they were saying no, there's, no, there's no, there's no contact with that. No it's contact with the head, with the shoulder. M Michael Lennis made the point that if he did that at Magic Round, when, when the year Tyrell Fumato got sent off, yeah, he would have got five weeks. I've he would have got sent off too. I've, you I've seen Frankie, Frankie Mallow got 10 minutes in the bin for a hit like that once because they thought he hit him in the head. Yeah. Well, that's the point that James, James Savage just, just made. Uh, Flano didn't milk it. That's the If, if Flano, Flano stays exactly on right. the ground and holds his jaw... He probably gets sent off because it looks it was close. It was close. Well, you might it was you close. Might actually, it was very close, but yeah. yeah, I'm I'm just going off the cuff, you know. But um, very <laughs> very very close. Um, the first one, but the second one should have been ten in the bin. Yeah, second one was clear. It was clear. It was a it was a high, reckless, lazy shot. Yep, that it was tight. straight in the head. It had to be ten in the bin. I can't believe that wasn't ten in the bin. The second one. Uh, the he, first he one, always, was... he's yeah, always like yeah. that when he plays the dragons. Have you noticed it? It's always like that when he plays the dragons. Like last year, he had a confrontation with Blocker, I think, and then yeah. the year before, um, he told off Zach Lomax in Wollongong. So, yes, he I, I, he I, think, like uh, I, I think Big, Big T's favorite, uh, favorite fan, uh, Peter Placidio Veneziano, is uh, is just not grab, yeah. Thanks, Clemens. Yeah, Clemens Grub. He, he's not just like that against the Dragons, Jeff. No, he's, he's not. He's, not. he's just like that. 
He's a... Um, that's the end of my sentence. He's a similar to the Arsenal He's a grab as well. He's a grab as well. He's a thug bastard. Yeah, yeah. they're thugs. Yeah, there's, there's a few, few of them like that in the comp. All right, well, um, might have a quick look at the lower grades and we'll, we'll start by having a look at the New South Wales Cup highlights. And we're underway, Dragons and the Western Suburbs Magpies. The ball away from Collie. They charge up the hit line, the Dragons to be, or the Western Suburb Magpies to this Dragons defence. 12 metres in. Couchman getting a good pass away, Toby. Trapped in the tackle, though. With the 5 8 in Ralph. He plays it 38 metres out. As Toby Couchman gets it away, and now we see Glover trying to get a ball on. He does so. The Dragons flying down the right side, and Dylan Egan scores. He's trying to catch the Dragons' defence, and he did so. As now Louis Toso runs it up, and Louis Toso held. Five metres out. Levatu going left. Matai, short ball. Western Suburbs a chance. The ball back on the inside to Hodges. Hodges scores. And the Magpies return serve from the Western Suburbs goal line. Molison goes left. Glover gets it on. Matthew Fine holding the ball up. He goes himself at the end. He scores. Matthew Fine, well, he nearly... Molison... Going left, it's Ralph, he gets it on. Oh, good pass by Matthew oh, Fine. Now cutting back on the inside, looking for support here, Tui Pelotu. He got a ball back away. It's just about putting it down, they'll score. Well, it's all about getting yourself in position. Finau, a game from acting half, going right. This is where they've got numbers. Ralph got the pass on, and then, oh, the ball away was nice. He scores in the corner, Tamale. But Matthew Fine, what about the pass? And the question is, is now he, he charges his way close to the line. He's held up Porter. Now from acting half, he caught everybody napping. I said it was going to happen. James Valivatu. Half eventually held, 13 metres out. The ball is played. Melissa from acting half, he got a pass away. Charging up the middle again before he's contained his free barn. Though he's got it down, I reckon. Only just, well, the Magpies defence got to him, but too late. There's still seven minutes remaining. The Magpies looking to go left. Collie gets it away. Oh, this is good play. Running the ball up the middle is Felony. Felony's close. Felony's over. Seven metres out. They're 11 in from the western side. Siren goes. Six to go. Called. And they get a penalty. The Magpies, well, yeah, 10 in the bin has been given as well. So a Dragon gets 10 in the bin. Now they come to the right. Last play. They come to the right side. Collie gets it away. And now it's a chance for Casey. Casey got a ball away. It's been dropped. Wow. Kirk Nilly was the miracle worker. Not to be. The Dragons win 24-18. Well, we see there a, a good win. From the New South Wales Cup side, 24 points to 18. Uh, having a look through those highlights, uh, Jesse, I mean, anything that you see in the actual highlights package there uh, that, that impressed you or uh, something you think a few players might need to work on? Uh, yes and no. I mean, there didn't look really too much standouts there. I mean, yes, they got the win, but, um, yeah, um uh, wasn't the greatest performance but they they did get the win um yeah um no real standouts but um yeah if they're really competing for first grade spots though um they should be um looking to put pressure on those players um with with that center spot up for grabs now um we don't know who's gonna there's no real standout there to, to come into the team so uh i don't know about you donnie what what do you who did you see any standouts from that one uh, just uh, just sort of pointing to, to Stephen Bates' comment before I get to yours, Jess, uh, Tioni Finau, uh, he, he didn't play in this game. He was uh, was a late scratching uh, with a, a grade one hammy. Uh, he's apparently due back next week. But uh, in, in, term, in terms of your comment, like I, I think 
sometimes when all you get to see is the highlights, uh, you you don't really get the the full picture. I, I I watched this game on the New South Wales Rugby League TV app, and uh, it was a it was a really powerful showing from our forwards. We we rolled up over the advantage line all game, and despite the like we we we're actually pretty awful. In a lot of respects, we completed at just sixty-six percent in this game. We made a lot of errors. Uh, we, we gave away a lot of penalties. So nine errors to five. Uh, it was ten penalties to five against us. It was four set restarts to two against us, and yet still, we ran for two hundred and fifty meters more than the Magpies, averaging over fifty meters per set compared to just thirty-seven meters per set from West. Uh, we were a far better team. And, and as I said, it was the forwards. And when I say it was the forwards, it was the Countman brothers. Toby had 13 runs for 144 metres. Ryan, 15 runs for 162 metres. Toby also had a compulsive offload in this game for some reason and, and finished with five offloads. Uh, Ryan had one. Had Christian Torpolotu had four offloads. The Dragons had... A, a need to get rid of the ball. Uh, Ryan was perfect defensively. 35 tackles, 100% efficiency. Toby made 32 tackles at 91.43% efficiency. Uh, Christian Torpolotto, who I mentioned before, he had 192 metres, also worth a mention, a six-tackle bust. But for me, the Calton brothers are the, the ones that, that stood out in this game. Uh, they, they were both both outstanding and both have, have put their name uh, you know, in the mark as, as deserving deserving some recognition. And, and some guy called Matt Hasler has put those stats in, in, the, in the chat as well. So, uh, yeah. Hey, man, you, uh, you, you must be uh, agreeing with those comments. Agreeing with me. Yeah, how do you feel? Yeah, that, that doesn't happen. That <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if it, I'd probably agree with you a lot more if you stop putting shit on bloody Jackson Ford. But um, no, look, I, I'm actually, uh, I, I want to see the Couchman boys uh, play a little bit more uh, top grade. I, I reckon they've got a lot to offer and uh, they've got uh, age on their side, um, which is good. So uh, with more exposure, they're only going to get better. Jackson Ford's going to get a cop even more this week playing the Dragons. <laughs> it will have gone. So, so Jackson Ford playing for the Warriors against the Dragons. Uh, oh, we 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 all must take that. Rick, what do you reckon, has man? <laughs> come on, come on. No comment. Load up. Load up. <laughs> Last year we was looking forward to him playing Billy Burns. <laughs> and then Billy Burns did what <laughs> most scum bastards do, and. Went and joined fucking Cronulla. The scummers. Yeah, no, he's dead to me. Um, <laughs> all right, well, let's have, let's have a bit of a look at the, the rest of the old raids. I'll, I'll drop the other guys out so they can uh, do their hair. Uh, but uh, Jersey Fleet, uh, whoop, we're also celebrating in this game at halftime. Led 22 points to four, uh, thanks to tries to Kane Barnes, Ashton Ward, Jack Quine, and a great try to Kai Russell. Uh, again, if you if you follow Stephen Bates on on Instagram, go and uh, go go and have a, have a, have a look at the the try that Kai Russell scored. He's put it on his Instagram page, and I'm sure uh, we'll get a chance to share it throughout the week. But uh, the under twenty ones, uh, they didn't emerge from the sheds after the break. Uh, they gave up twenty seven unanswered points, and after leading twenty to twenty two to four, lost thirty one twenty two. Uh, so that was a, a little disappointing. Hopefully they can bounce back next week and um, yeah, get back to their best. They might have a, a couple of players uh, join their squad from the SG Ball Steelers. Uh, they were eliminated from the competition uh, with the Knights beating us comfortably, 44 points to 16. Uh, we scored first Scored first through Ben Rumble, uh, but then some, some a couple of errors from Jackson Smith gave the, uh, the Knights a chance. And the competition's best attacking team didn't need much invitation. Uh, the Knights scored a couple of tries, got out to a 10-4 lead. 
And then we didn't see the ball again for quite some time. I, I was watching this game and fuming at the referee, gave the Knights uh, half a dozen six agains and, and penalties, which effectively gave them unlimited tackles. And, and that, put us, that put us to bed. Uh, behind by, I think, 22 at the break. Um, I can't exactly remember. The New South Wales Rugby League Facebook page is a uh, uh, website, rather, is incorrect. Uh, but when Tyrone Amone uh, scored early in the second half, there was still a glimmer of hope. Uh, even when Lycan King Togia uh, finished off a great try, it was 32-16 uh, with 18 minutes to go. And I, I still gave us some chance of actually coming back and, and maybe... Uh, causing a bit of a boil over coming home all over the top. But uh, in the end, uh, we, we uh, can't really blame the ref at all. The Knights were, were simply the better team. Uh, that will see Newcastle now take on the St George Dragons next week for a spot in the grand final. Uh, so uh, our, our other team, the St George Dragons, with an opportunity to to perhaps uh, you know get a little bit of revenge for our... Uh, our little brother, the Illawarra Steelers. Um, so Jesse will enjoy that little comment. Um, they're, playing, yeah. they're playing Newcastle in the Tasha Gale. Yeah, well, quick, right? I, I, I don't think so. Um, I think uh, we'll, we'll have to wait for the draw, but in Tasha Gale, I believe Illawarra will be taking on the Cronulla Sharks after they upset the Rooster 24-6. So I think because the, the Steelers finished on top, they played the lowest, the lowest ranked winner from the first week, which would be the Sharks, who finished sixth. Uh, that should we should be reasonably confident, I think, of that one, uh, because we actually beat the Sharks thirty-eight four in the final round of the regular season. Uh, but still, we'll need to get it done. Um, but if you're right, Jeff, we, we could actually put, be playing the Newcastle Knights in every game because I think the Lisa Fiola Cup. Is up against the Newcastle Knights after they beat Parramatta 22 10. Uh, the two teams didn't meet during the regular season, uh, but the Knights, they actually lost their first three games of the season in the Lisa Fiola Cup and haven't lost since. Uh, so I, I'd be expecting a really tough battle for under 17s girls. Uh, but uh, I guess I might, might, might bring you in because uh, Tasha Gale, Lisa Fiola Cup, you generally know a little bit more about the. The, the women's game than I do. I mean, how, how are we going to go? How are we going to fare? Uh, are we going to have, you know, potentially three teams in a grand final? Do you think it's a, a, a genuine possibility or are we uh, barking up the wrong tree? It would be nice to see. I mean, we have some of the best um, young young girls coming through the system and if Jamie's still there, he can um, probably have a bit more of a say on it as well. He's, as he's in charge of the pathways at the club as well, as well as an RLW coach. Um, but Jamie, yeah, Jamie's have... in bed now, I'm pretty sure, mate, but um, yeah. we can hope. <laughs> we'll try and get um, him back on too, I think. Yeah, well, Stephen Bates, there's too many injuries. I'm not sure in which grade he's talking about. The, the SG Ball, the Tarka Gale, or the, 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 the Lisa Fiola. But, um, yeah, if you can clarify that, Batesy, that'd be, that'd be great. Um, yeah, we, we certainly don't want to see injuries going into into, into these games. Uh, I, I, maybe he's talking about the Illawarra Steelers because I know that, no, I know the Steelers had a lot of trouble with yes, injuries. Was, uh, yeah, so Dan, Daniel Miafu, uh, I know that their, their captain uh, was uh, was injured, uh, so he didn't play in that that elimination final. Uh, Lycan King Togia was only that was his first game back. Cade Reed missed a lot of footy. Uh, throughout the year as well. Yeah, he's, he's, he's confirmed. It is the, the Steelers FG ball. So, yeah, they, they did have quite a few injuries throughout the year. But uh, as also said, we should win all three games next weekend, which, um, yeah. Uh, I, I, the grand final. I, well, I, I'll, I'll go to you, Big T. I mean, uh, all, all three grades in the in the sort of lower grades into a grand final. I mean, what would that, what would that mean for the club? Uh, particularly, I, I, I guess... Again, focusing a little bit on, on Jesse's main area, but uh, the, the, the pathways for the for the women, uh, if we would have the under-17s and under-19s both making grand finals. Oh, that would be awesome, awesome, um, if our girls made the grand finals like that. Um, yeah, no, it, it's looking good for our NRLW team because those players will come through through our system. So um, we'll have them there, have them there to choose from. Um I don't know how many the 
I don't know if any of the uh, main girls are playing there. There's two in the Steelers, ta uh, Tasha Gale. Ella Costa and um, Charlotte Basham. Both played last year. Okay. Um, but yeah, um, they're still, they're still, they can still play down there. So um, it'll be good to see those girls coming through. And it'd be like the, um, the Penrith men's system where they won all, all the grades a few years ago. Um, good, good to see those players coming through and we're, we're developing good young young girls. Yeah, so... Yeah, so yeah. I, I, I think I think it's great at the, at the moment, and, and it's something I, I've sort of been working on a little bit myself. Is I, I tend to get I tend to get really excited about our own talent. I mm. tend to get I, I like that. That's the only players I watch. I, I watch the Dragons players. I watch the players in in our system, and I see them. And I see a guy like like a Hayden Buchanan and. Yeah, you know, go, oh, he's a he's a fantastic player. He played played Australian schoolboy. He's an absolute legend. Now he's he, he's gonna he's gonna kill it. Like we've we've got we've got all the best young talent. But I'm starting to to, to sort of come to the realization that because I don't watch all the other teams, they've all got some yeah. pretty good players coming through their systems yeah, as well. Right. Like yeah, every yeah. every every club's got a lot of talented players. There is there is so much talent out there, and there's, there's not enough time for. For me or anybody to, to watch no. all of them, you sort of watch your own guys, and uh, you know you, you you follow them, and you hope that, that they they are successful. Yeah. Um, but in terms of them being the best of the best, and the the only ones that uh, can, can well, yeah. possibly make it successful, I mean, there, there's plenty of good talent. We don't have a couple of years ago. We don't. We don't have a couple of years ago with um, Amone Sullivan and Sloan. They were our future. They were our... Um, and the Fenor twins, even. They were in that side. They were, that's right, yeah. So they were our future. Colin Eisen was in that Colin Eisen, yes. We've also, we've also got to be careful um, bringing these young kids through because you might you might destroy them by putting them in too early. So um, and I think maybe Bud Sullivan, um, he might have been brought up too early. Um, too much hype on him. He was going to be the next best player. Um, Sloan's starting to um, show that he's going to be a good player. Um, he needs to put his body on the line more, as we said last know. week. As we said last week against the Dolphins, uh, against the um, the Knights, um, he just wouldn't get down on that wet wet ground to get the ball. But um, got to be careful with saying this, this young bloke's going to be the next big thing because we might. We might destroy their confidence or hype them up too much before they before they're ready. Uh, only a small percentage of, of juniors make oh, it to the NRL. Exactly right. So, exactly right. We were talking before they, they they do go out to the country and look for all these younger guys and they bring them into oh, um, build, build homes. You know, the Roosters have got a house somewhere in town where their young blokes from the country live there. All live together. Um, so it's a block of flats, actually. It's a yeah. So there's a lot of players living there. So yeah, they do. The younger blokes, you've got to be careful, though. Yeah, Stephen Bates uh, also mentioning a couple of bad injuries right at the end of this game. Actually, was with the, with about two or three minutes to go. Uh, I, I can't remember the first one. I think it was Jackson Smith uh, that that picked up an injury and had to be carried off. And then the the it was about a five minute delay. And then Seth Pearman ran out of dummy half and got bent over awkwardly and it looked like he snapped his leg in half. It was a horrible looking injury uh, and got a, got carried off. So there was certainly a, a couple of um, unpleasant incidents at the, the back end of that, of that uh, SG ball uh, game. But, um, yeah, again, I, I think there's some good signs for the future. Uh, I, I just... I'm starting to temper expectations a little bit more on the players because there are so many good, so many good players that the winger for the Knights in this game uh, was absolutely sensational. He scored three tries. Uh, he's going to be he's going to be hard to handle. We're going to have to shut down that side of the field uh, when the, the Dragons play them uh, next week. Uh, I think that's going to be a, a really tough one for us. But uh, yeah, hopefully we can come away with three good wins. That's uh, man. All right, moving into uh, some uh, some news and rumours, and uh, I've written a couple of things down. I've written a great deal down. But Sunia Taruma uh, coming with coming to the Dragons with the option of the fullback role. 
I think a three or four year deal or something along those lines was reported. Uh, do you think Taruva is the answer to all our problems? I think it might be answered at one or two of them, but I think uh, being being the answer to all of them is a bit of a uh, a bit of a stretch. I mean, who's who's come out and said that he's you know going to be going to be fullback? Well, not that he's going to be fullback. The the report in the uh, Sydney Morning Herald today uh, was that he will be given the op. He, he's going to be able to compete for the fullback role. So not he's definitely going to be the fullback or he's 100% being guaranteed the fullback role. Uh, but what the Dragons have said is if you if you want to play fullback, you'll have the option to compete for it. And it doesn't look like he'll have that opportunity at Penrith. No, not with Dylan Edwards there. No. Yeah. Do, 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 do you think he's an option at fullback, though? I mean... Do you think he, he could potentially be a better option than than, than Tyrell Sloan? I, I we don't have a lot more other options. Much been played, well, to be what? honest. But, um, I mean, what it, what it basically does do is it basically puts a little bit of pressure on Sloan because uh, if he doesn't, you know, perform up to standard, then, you know, there's a, you know, a talented uh, option, you know, breathing right down his right down his neck uh whereas at the moment if i mean if, if tyrell sloan goes down next week and you know he's gone for the rest of the season i mean what's who's our fullback option and take Lomax. that like, out of the equation because he's, he's not going to be the next year he's not going to be, well, be Fino, next year isn't it donny well matt fee nice guy that's playing fullback in in new south wales cup uh i I I would argue Ben Rumble should be playing New South Wales Cup. That's 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 been my my argument for a while. Uh, that that I think he's more of an option at playing fullback in the NRL than Matt Fino is. But Matty Fino is actually doing an okay job. He's doing all right in the New South Wales Cup. So I don't know, man. I really don't. <laughs> I don't know, but um. Yeah, John Muller saying, surely we're not offering fullback money to Taruba. Uh, Jeff, I mean, you seem to know more out. about what players are being offered than in it than, than me. It hasn't come out what they've what they um what the price tag is, but it's it's a lot more. Um, they're going to give the. Um, I've heard it's a lot more than what Penrith are prepared to offer him, and. They're, they're, they're wait, waiting to see what happens with Penrith, whether they come in with a last-minute offer. Um, but apparently they what are... What are Penrith offering? Do you know what Penrith are offering? Not exactly, but it's... It's weak. It's not, Mark. Uh, it's winning money. Um, yeah, we've we've offered maybe. him a lot more than what than what Penrith have. And yeah, I, I, I initially heard, heard it was... Their juniors coming through. So I don't think if they lose him... It won't that it won't worry too much though because they've got a well they got Jesse of, McLean yeah yeah Jesse McLean comes straight into that that spot on the wing like I don't think they're going to be too too worried about that but uh, yeah I heard 350, 400. Um, 400. and again and again these are all made up numbers they're made up numbers from a journalist that I don't know they're getting everything everything every bit of information they're getting comes from the manager and what the manager wants you to think is the offer. Um, so I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know whether, whether you believe it or not, but uh, I, I think when it comes to numbers, um, we're all just guessing, which uh, brings us to another guess. Uh, Big T. Yes, sir. Lomax uh, is apparently being offered a four-year, $2.8 million deal. Uh, to join to join the Eels, uh, do you see that as a pay cut or a pay rise? Seven hundred thousand. Um, it's a four year twenty two point eight. So it's, it's a seven hundred thousand. Yeah. So um, um, no. Um, he gave up eight hundred at the Dragons because he doesn't want to play winger. Goes to Parramatta with a chance of playing winger. So um, I reckon it's a pay pay equal pay. I think. Um, it's two extra years. 
two extra years, yeah. So I think it's equal pay, actually, um, equal to what he had at the Dragons. So, uh, has been a um, a four year deal for a guy that is currently three years into a six year deal. Uh, how much confidence should Parramatta have that he's actually going to see out a four year deal? Uh, I look if I if I was Parramatta, I would have very little confidence in him actually seeing it out. I mean, if he, I mean, what what happens if he, yeah, because he, he's going there to play center, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you know, what's what's going to happen if you know one thing leads to another and he ends up on the bloody wing? I want out. The exact same fucking position <laughs> he's in now, just you know, getting paid a bit less for it. Yeah, wow, 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 Kleenex. Yeah, exactly. Like you, you yeah, see all these, you, you see all these other players. You see all these other players coming out. Talakai came out and said, "I will play whatever position um, fits, fits best for the team. Give me best for the team." And if to be fair, team, Zach Lomax said the same thing. He Several times he said, well, "I'll play whatever position is best for the team." But yeah, if they put me on the wing, yeah. I'm going to fucking cry and whatever. Well, they were his, his intentions, though, were they? No, no. So it shows you what sort of a person Jack Lomax is. He's, he's not loyal. Um, but although, although in saying that, he's leaving the club. He did have an absolutely uh, fantastic must be a, game. There must be more. Fantastic too. game. Fantastic game today. And the last five weeks has been. He's been playing well as well. I heard that he had a big bust up with Flanagan. That's why he wanted out. Yeah, I've I've heard similar, mate. I've heard that he does not get on, doesn't get on with the no. new coach. He's uh, no, he's no, not no. a fan of the new coach, and and that's the real reason why he wants out. Um, but why is, so, why is he not a fan? Because Flanagan said you're not a centre. You're twenty seventh best centre in the competition, um, out of thirty four, and you're going to be playing wing. He's trying things to improve the team. At the end of, at the, end of the day, Flano is a guy that he's going to rub some people up the wrong way. Exactly. Right, yeah. okay. I think Flano's okay with that. Like he's he's come to terms with the fact that he's a he's an abrasive kind of character. He's a fucking NRL coach. Mm. Like an NRL coach is sometimes for some people is not going to it's it's not going to work. And for whatever reason, Zach Lomax and Shane Flanagan. It doesn't work for Zach Lomax. He doesn't like it. He doesn't enjoy it. And he, he wants to go somewhere else where, I don't know, I, different personalities might mesh. I don't, I. Yeah. Well, he, he didn't fucking get along with Hook. He didn't either. get on with Hook either, did he? He didn't get did on he? with Hook either. Well, look, he didn't ask for a release. Maybe, when... maybe he's just one of those players that has a, has a problem with authority. He yeah. went off when Hook dropped him last year, remember? Fucking wouldn't you? Yeah, but I mean, yeah, and then he then he went on the bloody, you know, Fox NRL show with Blake Laurie. Right and of him. They both yeah. carried on like complete fuckwits. Well, that was that was pre-season, I think. I think they, again, uh, like that, like the video this season where people drew a lot of conclusions that was filmed before the season even started. But yeah, that's when he said, "I'll play wherever I want to put me." Yeah. I mean, he's, he's he said, well, they really want to put me as long as it's not on the wing. Yeah. Is what he could have said. <laughs> but again, I'm a, I'm a, like, I, I, you come back to Ben Hunt. And, and I hate to bring it back to Ben Hunt because I know a lot of people will get pissed off when we do bring it back to Ben Hunt all the time. But Ben Hunt is quite happy to play dummy half for Queensland. I'm sure Zach Lomax will be over the moon to play on the wing for New South Wales but doesn't want to do it with the Dragons. I mean, why, why is that, Jess? Do you think that's fair? Well, any chance you're going to get a rep jumper thrown to you, you're not going to say no. I mean, you're going to want to represent right. your state or your country. Um, no matter. That has not always been your opinion, though. You've been, you've been quite adamant that Ben Hunt should play nine for the Dragons because he's willing to play it for Queensland. Yeah, but... As, 
as we've mentioned before, there's we don't have any other halfback that could play anyone at his level at our club that could play at halfback. I mean, if we had that solution, we would, but it's been tried a couple of times before in the past and it just hasn't worked. We're going to get, get to, I, I, I love this show and I love the, the differing comments. Uh, Nath Batterfield saying Lomax is an average centre. Uh, Stephen Bates saying it's got nothing to do with playing on the wing. Um, not, uh, you're not expanding on that in terms of what it does have, have to do with. And, uh, you know, I think there is, I, mean, I, I think that's my, my kind of feeling as well, is that it's got nothing to do with Zach Lomax playing on the wing. I, I think it's, there's personalities. No, but, but, well, there, there's something about that. Whether, yeah, whether it's not liking the coach, whether it's something else, whether it's it's some other issue that we don't know about. But I, I, I think people simplifying it and saying Zach Lomax is leaving because he doesn't want to play on the wing, I think that's rubbish. Uh, Nathan Phil saying he's an average centre. Um, I, I would say that's fair in that he has been an average centre, but I, I, again... Go back, watch the last four or five games last year when he was playing in the centres. He was every bit as good as he is right now. Um, yeah. Uh, Jeff, were there any injuries to come out of this game that you, you, you can recall? I saw a few guys with rolled ankles and, and looked a, a, a bit suspect at times. But, um, I mean, apart from, from Jack Bird's concussion, was there any other injuries that you saw? I saw Rava having a limp late in the game. Um, I don't know what the go is there. I don't know if it was no, just cramp or anything. An yeah, I don't know the full extent, and I don't know if Flano said anything. In the... I haven't watched the press conference, so I don't know what happened there. Um, but I'm sure we'll know in the next 24 hours. Um, but if yeah, that if if Rava is ruled out, so that might have for two potential spots up for grabs um, for Friday night's game in Wollongong. And well, potentially it, one of the, what an incredibly inexperienced backline. You know, let, let, let's go to that one because I might go to all three panel members. If Jack Bird is is out injured, I'll start with you, Hasman, because uh, for the first time tonight, you want to talk. Uh, <laughs> 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 if Jack Bird is ruled out, uh, what 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 are, what what are the changes that you're making? Lamex to Santo to a Bilotto wing. Swap rather. Simple. Swap simple. Rather two Pilotu. Yep. So, so, so the same same changes, but those two changing sides. Yeah. Uh, two I, two I on left. Two Pilotus on the left. Uh, run, they make, um, rather's a right winger. Yeah. What side was two Pilotu on the weekend? Um, I I reckon yeah. he could play both. I think he was playing on the, on the on the left. He scored four tries like week before last. On, on the left. So, yeah, to 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 a blonde who's been playing on the same side, just uh, on the game on the weekend because um, Tamale and to who have been playing side by side, center and winger. Mm. But Tamale played on the wing because I was trying to work out which one actually swapped sides, and I can't. I can't no. remember. Well, two uh, scores down, scores down the left. So, um, <laughs> I was like, yeah, was <laughs> Ali likes Fanner. Um, cool. Me too, but it's, it, it, it's okay. I mean, just, just. I mean, I mean, we've got to address this. What are your thoughts on Fanner? Two people was on the left. <laughs> I just said that. Who's yeah. Fanner? <laughs> <laughs> it's a great drink. I mean, don't, don't you agree, Big T? Fanta. I, I yeah. like Sunkiss better. Sunkist is better than Fanta. Well, you get a piss early. I like the Raspberry Fanta. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Cherry Cola. Does anyone like Cherry Cola? Is that another no. Bulldogs fan? <laughs> yeah. Ali's <laughs> yeah, a Bulldogs fan, isn't he? Good on you, Ali. Thanks for watching. Well, Lisa Murray Cooper agrees with Bug T. Who's <laughs> Bug T? How you That's doing, mate? <laughs> you're, bugging you're, Lisa. you're bugging her. <laughs> uh. <laughs> you Ali is not a, <laughs> he's not, Ali's not a not a not a bulldogs fan at all. Dragons for life, baby. 
Yeah. <laughs> I agree. At least we're creamy with tea. Ginger beer is better. I love ginger yeah. beer. I like John Mullison's raspberry cordial is the best. This is oh. uh, this has been a degenerative con conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Where is I don't know how we got there. Gone. Uh, Solo, slam it down fast. You're lovely. Yeah. Too, 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 too many ginger beers. Too, too many. Oh, um, beers nice. Yeah. Too, 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 too many of something. What's your favourite? What's your favourite uh, alcoholic ginger beer, gents? Dickens, probably. <laughs> well, that's not. Yeah, that's not. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot the name of it. <laughs> oh, um, ah. that's called Brookvale. Brookvale. Yeah, Brookvale Union ginger beer. I'm with you, mate. Yeah, that is 100% the best. All right. Well, uh, Jeff, I mean, did you, I think we went to, to Hasman and Big T with their solutions. If Jack Bird's out, what do, what do you do? Uh, I, I, I might actually change it up for you uh, just so it's something different. So if Shane Flanagan said Zach Lomax is not going into the centres, if Zach Lomax doesn't go into the centres, what do you do if Jack Bird's out? Um, you're probably not going to like it, but I think he'll he might go with um Savalia Tamale for on debut. Um, I know he's not the best defender, but um, just give him a shot and see how he handles the occasion. Um, <coughs> um to, Mate, to, 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 to be honest, I I I, I don't think it's going to go well uh, if I'm honest, but. I don't, I don't disagree with it either. I, I, I think if you, particularly if it's only if it's only, or if it's only one game, yes. If it's two games, then it starts to become well. You give him yeah, both. Yeah. You've got to give him both games regardless of what happens. Um, he'll be marking yeah. Manu and RTS in, in successive games. That's going to be a big ask for him. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 but I, give him a go. Let's see. Let's see what he's got. To say you've got two games, doesn't matter how good or how bad you go, you're only getting two games. Do your job, yeah. Just go out, go out there, do what you've got to do. Um, I don't, I don't mind that option. Uh, I, 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 it scares the shit out of me because, as you know, I, I don't rate him all that highly defensively. But we haven't got a lot of depth in that centre position, really, have we? Yeah, well, I mean, do, do, do you go safety first with a guy? With with, with with one of the Phenite wins when you say you say safety first. I mean, I, I saw Matty Matty Hasler's head, head snap around, and he's like, "That's not safety first. That's about, about the most risky thing you could possibly do." <laughs> wasn't that wasn't that Hasman's favourite player last year, Matt Phenite? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, they've got some experience. I guess is what I'm talking about. But Hasman, you you would hate that option. You you would prefer to see a, a, a Samalio Tamale. Give it an opportunity, yes? I'd rather see Tom Eisenhuth in the centres than either of those two. Dan Russell? And, I, and I'm not I'm not even fucking joking either. Dan Russell in the centres, maybe? <laughs> Fuck off. What about Max? I don't even want to see him in the bloody second row. Locker. <laughs> Locker. <laughs> Locker. <laughs> Locker. Well, is it, I mean, you might as well. He's, he's not doing much in the forward, so you know, might as well stick him. Uh, 110 shoes. metres today, he done well today. 110 metres, come on. But whoever comes in has got a big job on there. 110 metres, yeah. but not particularly effectual. Like, he, he does, as, as we've said a thousand fucking times, he, he doesn't bend the line. So, you know, how many run metres he makes is pretty much irrelevant. Wait, hang on. I just realised no, Sully will be marking Manu and RTS. So it'd be on the other side. Oh, oh, either way, they've got good centers, mate. Um... They've got Dylan Matini, the Lesniak, bloody rock. Um, what's his name? Um, Montoya. Rocco Berry. Montoya. Right? Rocco Berry. Yeah, they've. they've, well, they've well, look what happened. They've, they've actually, they've actually, they've actually, they've actually been poor. I think. Um, draw with Manly today, but um, they've. Um, I've been happy with them. They should have been. They should be on top of the comp. They've got the best side in the comp. I think with um, they could um, have easily won all six games. Uh, easily, that's right. But they haven't the concentration. They got to the cup, first couple of games. They got to a big lead, and just where have I gone there? Look, 
It's a big it's a big comment. I haven't read it all. Hey. It's, it's from it's probably bullshit, but uh, I, I just saw it. it somebody, somebody, I like Colin Lewis has taken the effort to write an essay, so uh, we, we okay, we'll read it. it. We read it, yeah, yeah. So I think Paul Lomax needs to have an IQ test. He wants to leave, and I'll go to you with this one, Jess, because he wants to leave the beautiful Illawarra, fifteen minutes from work, to go to <laughs> Parramatta <laughs> and fight his way to work in Sydney traffic. And drop two hundred thousand dollars a year in pay, and not having any more chance of winning a premiership at the Eels, and dare say not, uh, will not be playing any set in the centres at the Eels. He has become their best, our best player consistently since Flanagan put him on the wing. Uh, like you said, needs an IQ test. Uh, would you? Would you agree with uh, Colin's comments there, Jeff? I, I agree, comment, uh, Colin. I, I'd probably say that's the comment of the night. Um, well done. Um, yeah, I 100% agree. Like, he's, yeah, he's situated, well, not far from where I am, to be honest. And, yeah, he travels 15, 20 minutes in, into Wollongong each day for training. And, yeah, he'd have to wake up very early in the morning to get to... Um, he's got Paramount. a $6 million house there, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah, and to be, he'd have to leave in the early hours of the morning to get to Parramatta at what training by what seven o'clock. Um, he might have to sell that house and and, and move to Sydney, and and it's yeah. Ugh. <laughs> hey, Tim, would you would, would you like to sell your house and move to Sydney for two hundred thousand dollars less than you're earning right now? <laughs> 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 Keeps coming out and talking to me. Um, oh man, that's twice tonight. I actually thought you were answering the question, but just didn't have the words and were just. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. But you're on mute. Yeah, no, I, for, I forgot the question now. Um, Have you ever known Big Ted to be short of a word? No, no. So, money. so what were we talking about? Lomax. So, something. Uh, oh was, no! Was about... Yeah, I, I moved. Yep. I moved. I moved from Campbelltown down to beautiful Kalala, Kalala Beach. Um, and even if they wanted to give me a hundred thousand dollars more, I wouldn't even move up there. So um, <laughs> that's just. I, I agree with uh, Cole. Um, if you don't mind me calling you Cole, um, yeah, I agree with him. He doesn't need an IQ test because. Yeah, personality clashes, you can overcome them. Yeah. Anyway, we'll, we'll, I don't know whether we'll ever know the uh, full extent and the full reasons for the uh, change. At the end of the day, we won today. Hey! We've talked a little bit negatively just the what? fact we had the bloody good win. <laughs> We've won three out of six. There's, there's been one more activity tonight as there was, buddy, last week. I said four out of six. <laughs> We've won more than half of the games that we won last year. Uh, and also, with, with Lomax, his rent's going to be higher up there, isn't it? Power Man, yeah. play a oh, shit, yeah. shit load of money up there. Mm. In any case, once again, thank you to our sponsor, Complete Warehouse Solutions. Uh, we'll call it a night. Uh, it's, it's, it's been a good one. It's been good fun. Uh, we're, we're on top of the world. We've had another win. Moving up the ladder. Uh, we'll never lose again. Come on, Dragons fans. Fire up. Fire up. Hearts out to all those people in Bondi. Yes. Come on, Jenny. Come on, Jenny. Come on, Jenny.
Let's must tell tales of dragons' wings and tune of victory. Tony and the Envy Crew will do their very best. Getting up top again on our breast with a red bee on our chest. The Mad Dragon Podcast is a sheep of camaraderie. Navigating rats down rabbit holes in the land of big red bee. And so I battle a sweet potato as I pursue his dream. The Mad Dragon Podcast.